Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to you. My name is Nick and we've recently reviewed a 50 Sega Mega Drive or Genesis games depending on where you are in the world and as per usual we're going to have a brief look at all of them all in one go. So this is the first Sega Mega Drive one we've done but do have a look at the others in the reviewed playlist. So let's go! And we start with Outrun, such a classic game, I had to start with this one as we start our adventure on the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis. Um, there's a lot of poor conversions about the place for this game, but this one is pretty good. I like the Game Boy Advance one and this one is pretty cool too. Great music, great sound, great handling and such a nostalgic classic game. Take your Ferrari across the whole of America and choose your junctions wisely for um, a differing experience each time. Cool arcade racing tops and um, Lotus Turbo Challenge a game I first played on the Commodore Amiga and it is very very difficult in terms of the time ticking down here you must go over different terrain um, about six or seven stages and it's a lot more difficult than the Amiga version I prefer the Amiga version this one seems a little bit stretched but if you're into this game and uh, wanted the experience then I would recommend this one as well we uh, come to a lot of racing games in this first one um, a lot of um, overlaps between Amiga and Mega Drive games. Test Drive 2, a game I played to death on the Commodore Amiga, and I'm pleased to say this game plays very similar to that one. Uh, it's got music playing all the way through, and the stages are different, so if you're a big fan of the game and wanted a new experience with different stages, then this is the one for you. Choose either your Porsche or Ferrari or another car as well, which was included. And you know, it's not the most sophisticated of games, but it gives me a great nostalgia buzz. Flame Ray isn't brilliant, but uh, you know, if you was there at the time, you'd probably enjoy it. Psycho Pinball, we come to a few pinball games here, possibly all of them in this first um, 50, or the, the odd one I haven't done. Uh, Psycho Pinball plays pretty good, heavily influenced, I think, by... Um, um, the Amiga game, Pinball uh, Magic and all those sort of ones. Yes, here we go. I can't remember the name of that Amiga one now, as you might have known. But a nice moody ball. We're in sort of like a, a fairground or something like that. Uh, don't have nightmare, kids. Um, plays quite good in the ball physics. Uh, Lotus 2 Rex, known as Lotus 3 on the Commodore Amiga. Uh, Rex is like a course editor and it really builds on the first game. It's a lot easier I would say you can choose to be in races or the time stage I do like the um, snow again I think slightly better on the Commodore Amiga but this isn't bad also and plays pretty good Lotus 2 Rex if you're into designing your own courses you can't really go wrong uh, with this one but my preference is for Outrun I'd have to say on this particular system Pac-Mania um, a 3D uh, Pac-Man sort of game again another game I played heavily on the Commodore Amiga and this one is pretty much identical to that one Go round a 3D maze, eat all the power pills, avoid all the ghosts and eat them where necessary until you get to the jungly uh, steps. If you like Pac-Man, you'll like this one too. I would have to say an all-round uh, classic. Um, you know, uh, it's a good conversion, I'd have to say. I uh, played this also on the Game Boy Advance. This Mega Drive version is pretty cool. Another pinball game for you, Virtual Pinball. This one doesn't play particularly well. Uh, it's not reflective of pinball at all. I think the body is too wide. And look, there's flippers all around the place and it's quite an uninspiring game. With pinball games, I like a bit of magic, a bit of things to surprise me, and this one just annoys me. It looks like it's some kind of crazy design or something, and it doesn't quite work. It's got ball physics of such, but um, you know, there's better examples out there, which I'm sure we'll come to as we go through this initial 50. A Double Dragon from the arcades, this one is pretty cool. Um, always better in two player modes this because what tends to happen when you're in one player you get surrounded by people and they all um, beat you up. But you know, it's Billy and his brother if he turns up and you must rescue um, uh, his girlfriend who's been kidnapped by this evil thug gang. Um, there's a few sequels to this one which we'll, I think one of them will come to in this 50 and the others maybe uh, a little bit later down the line. So you know, it's a good conversion, Double Dragon. Super Hang On, another Leviathan from the arcades, uh, plays better than the Amiga version, there's some great sounds, some great um, uh, biking, um, different modes of play in terms of the difficulty, and I was really, really impressed by this game, probably the best version of Super Hang On I played, I did like the Game Boy Advance version, but this is quite uh, bigger, as you expect, with uh, a bigger screen, and it's got a pretty good difficulty level too, a game I would come back to if only I had a bit more free time available, Super Hang On. Afterburner 2, another massive one from the arcades. I never really 100% got on with these games. 
Uh, there's a bit of skill there, but um, that might be a lie. I just tend to go battle forward up and down to try and avoid all the firepower, and then I shoot. In the arcades, there was like a 360 gyroscopic cabinet which turned you upside down, I think. None of that here. Uh, just get dizzy and try and hold on to your lunch that you probably had about half an hour earlier. After Burner 2. Good stuff. Dragon's Fury, another one of the ping pinball games we'll come to. And this one plays quite good. It's like a, a fantasy sort of setting. You must hit the ball into that face a lot of the time to unlock uh, various um, enemies and demons. It's a bit of a gothic feel, this skeleton and blood all over the place. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed this game. It's one of the better pinball games available on the Sega Mega Drive. You might have your own individual favourite. If you do, then let me know. You might see them later on in this list of roundups. But pretty good fun, a good pinball game. Speedball 2, Brutal Deluxe. I played hours and hours and hours in this game on the um, Commodore Amiga. This one is comparable to that. There's a few sounds that seem to be missing, but in terms of giving you the Speedball 2 game, it is great and you will get a huge nostalgia buzz on this one if you're new to speedball i would say pick this one up the original game didn't come out on the mega drive but the sequel did and it gives you two leagues to uh, go through power-ups and it's bone crunch in action in the future um yeah i mean great fun this um 100 nostalgia dragon's revenge yeah, it's a sequel uh, to the previous dragon pinball game we just looked at this one is not quite as good in my opinion i don't quite like the design and and the colour scheme doesn't quite work as much, but having said that, it's not a bad pinball game. There's quite a lot to do. Uh, mini games, as you can see here, there's two Amazonian women. women and they look a little bit bored as we try and destroy that evil tree thing. But quite a lot to do. Keep you going for quite some time. Uh, pinball games, yeah, there's a lot worse ones about the place. This one is quite good. Hard driving, I'm really, really, really impressed by this game. For years, I've wanted a decent console conversion. Migas wasn't very good. Spectrum was horrendous. This one is absolutely brilliant it feels just like the arcades although you haven't got a steering wheel unless you hook it up the stunt track or the normal track and you have nice to go around to uh, get a qualifying time then you uh, race the amazing photon phantom who is in a blue blocky vector polygon car I get a really 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 warm buzz of this and this is a great conversion race driving uh, the sequel to hard driving uh, a little bit disappointed with this one. It gives you the hard driving track, which is great, uh, but then it gives you a few other tracks as well, and the draw rate isn't quite as good on those other tracks, and it doesn't give you a lot more. Now, if you had a choice between hard driving and race driving, I'd certainly t uh, pick race driving, but, um, you know, disappointed because it didn't offer as much as it possibly could do. Lots of different tracks where hard driving just had the original track and a choice of cars as well, but it doesn't make a huge uh, big difference to your actual experience. Crewball, it's pinball based on the pop band Motley Crue, um, plays good but very disappointing because, you know, what is this to do with the Motley Crue band? Now, I don't know too much about the band, but they could have been on the play field, there could have been guitars about the place or a rock thing. This looks very, um, I don't know, sterile with not much character at all. I'm not sure Motley Crue would have maybe uh, approved this one. Um, stick to some of those other pinball games first. Not a great deal to do, um, Motley Crue music could have been more of that. Pino Dini Soccer, or known as Kickoff 2 on the Commodore Amiga, it plays very similar to that. There are slight differences. You see, like energy bars next to uh, each player. Um, you can play like cups and leagues, and um, yeah. I would play quite a lot on this if I didn't already own it on the Amiga version. You can tell I grew up with the Amiga, not the Mega Drive or the Genesis, but I'm just learning about these games and um, so far I'm pretty impressed and you'll see quite a few good games here. Dino Dini Soccer, that's before FIFA took over of course. Dino Land, it's another pinball game based around dinosaurs and it's not too bad, I like the design and I like the theme. A bit cutie for some, it's not like a bloodthirsty um, Mortal Kombat meets um, Jurassic Park sort of esque. It's um, a bit Japanesey in style. Um, if they did a uh, more Jurassic Park style pinball table, then uh, I would be more of a fan. But um, yeah, there we go. It's very cutie with moving pop bumpers. Pinball. Wheel of Fortune, based on the TV. Bit of a change of pace here. We well, must answer questions, spin wheels. Uh, uh, and then try and solve um, the um, phrase or anagram or whatever it is. Well, that woman in the yellow dress turned things over. A bit buggy, my version. It tended to get stuck or crash a lot. But if you're into these sort of games, these TV, TV uh, sort of games, it's not bad. There's always weirdos in here, which we'll come to uh, when we look at Family Feud as well. Wheel of Fortune, earn your money. Road Rash, an absolute classic here. You must ride your bike 
uh, over different courses and punch people in the face and win, uh, well, come in the top three, I should say, for extra money to upgrade your weapons. This is the first game that kicked off a great series. Uh, frame rate is a bit weird, but I seem to um, let that go. It is a bit wibbly wobbly, but such a great fun game. You have to earn your weapons first of all. You can see who's in front of you, who's behind, and great use of rear view mirrors. Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball. Yes, Sonic gets into pinball here. Come out on a few systems. Game Boy Advance I have reviewed it on. Never made it on to the Commodore Amiga. But yeah, it's good. Although goes will, once you get used to it, will tend to last quite a long time. You must explore all the map, uh, release um, chemicals, and collect all the rings, as you would expect. You've got some um, movement over um, Sonic as he goes down by doing uh, left and right on the directions, and don't get swallowed up. It's alright, but it's not one for conventional pinballers. Row Rash 2, built on the success of the original game, um, the... Opponents you're racing against are a bit more aggressive and you get weapons a bit earlier. Apart from that, it plays very, very similar indeed. Uh, if you had Road Rush 1 and Road Rush 2, first of all from the screenshots, you might not notice too much of a difference. But again, it's awesome fun. You can punch and kick your opponents off their bikes whilst avoiding cows, as I didn't do there. Uh, I think that one was made out of solid concrete. What was that cow made of? Answers on a postcard. Road Rash 3 um, plays again similar to Road Rash 1 and 2. But this time you're going round the world. And uh, the cars drive on different sides of the road depending on what country you are. So if you're going to pick a game to play out of the Road Rash series uh, on the Mega Drive, choose Road Rash 3. Again, you've got different designs of uh, the racers, different bikes to upgrade and get. Uh, as I see, i am uh, got a chain here, or is it um, uh, a laboratory chain? But one out of the two. But epic. All three games are epic, but if you're going to get one, just get Road Rash 3. Super Off-Road from the arcades plays very differently to the Amiga version. There's different courses there. I think it's more um, accurate to the arcades. You are one player, although you can have more than one, against three other computer opponents there. Um, finish in the first uh, uh, positions and then you go on to the next track. But great hillbilly music all the way through, heaps of fun, especially on two player. If you're looking for a top down game at an angle, then you can't go far wrong or with this one super off road. Super Street Fighter 2, the new challengers. There's a few um, Street Fighter 2 games on the Mega Drive, but we pick on uh, this one. All your usual characters are there, of course, from the arcades. I never 100% uh, great at these sort of games, but I do prefer them to the more digital, realistic Mortal Kombat 2 games. I do prefer these cartoony ones, and Chun Lai is one of my favourites. Although here we see Guile versus E Honda, the Sumo Man. As soon as you've learnt the special moves, then great. But this is a great conversion, and you would have had a lot of fun out of this one. Battle Squadron, one of the best shooters in my opinion of all time vertically. Lots of different crazy power-ups come up on multiple systems. Uh, short loading times on this and great terrain. Uh, it's, it's epic in my opinion, uh, one of the um, best, as I say, shooters of all time. You might agree, you might not agree, but you know, that's what the comment section is for. Um, definitely needs a cheat on this, but the variety of weapons is absolutely fantastic. What an epic game. Kabooma. Outrun 2019, not as good as the original um, Outrun, but it's pretty fast as you drive this futuristic Batman sort of car. And it's not bad, uh, as I say, the excitement of Turbo Outrun is not there. It's lost a, uh, well, the original Outrun, I should say. Uh, it's lost a little bit of its character, but nonetheless, I would have been quite happy with it as a kid. It does contain uh, tunnels. It's a bit like a mixture of Outrun uh, meets um, Turbo Esprit for me. It's sort of like in the middle there. So if you like Outrun, want well, it's a bit extra in the future, here it is. Family Feud, I was telling you about this one, based on the US TV game in the UK, uh, the TV show at least was called Family Fortunes, where two families must compete against each other by answering questions which they think is going to come up at number one in a survey. They play and pass and one win fantastic prizes like a, a lawnmower or something or a holiday in Rochdale. Not saying anything bad with Rochdale, but the prizes were quite low. The American version might have been a bit uh, higher and then there's a special round at the end. FIFA International Soccer. Now, this doesn't look as good as the uh, the FIFA soccer games of today, but the playability is there. And this is the first game that uh, kicked it um, off, really. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to. There's quite a few FIFA games for me to come to. At the moment, at the time of recording, I've only done one. Uh, the World Cup's going on here, and it is quite mad. I think in a future one, uh, FIFA game, you, you could um, avoid a yellow card by trying to outrun the referee. Well, that silliness isn't here in this one. This is where they all got started. Turbo Outrun, the worst of all the Outruns in my opinion. 
Um, they, um, you just go from different stages each time. There's no choice of junctions to take. Um, and if you look at it, even compared to Lotus, um, it's not quite as good. Uh, the frame rate is poor compared to the original OutRun game you saw me um, playing in the first of these. Uh, it's not even as good as Turbo OutRun 2019. And that, that lorry is going a bit far. It looks pretty basic and I don't think it really should belong. They could have done a lot better. <laughs> Disappointing. Xenon 2 Mega Blast. Uh, a great Space Invaders game. My preference is um, uh, for... Um, a battle squadron rather than this one but this has got a nice uh, cute underwater theme normally there'd be happening music playing i seem to have turned it off so sorry about that but if you like any of these reviews uh these look backs so want to see the whole review then they are there in the sega mega drive genesis playlist so take a look at that looks absolutely gorgeous but extremely difficult uh, to play i would have to say Jennifer Capriati Tennis, the first tennis game I've looked at on the Mega Drive, seems to play well with a variety of shots, but I haven't got too much to uh, compare it against. There's a few Wimbledon games for me to come to, or Andre Agassi. But these girls look quite cute as they play their tennis backward and forward, and I did have a bit of a crush on Jennifer uh, Capriati back in the day. Yeah, I was a school kid anyway. She had a great effect on me, uh, but just for tennis. But is this game any good? Well, we'll soon find out. I, I quite enjoyed it, although there wasn't a great deal to it, but tennis is tennis, isn't it, really, to be honest with you? Uh, Ayrton Senna Super Monaco Grand Prix 2, the sequel to um, Super Monaco Grand Prix, which we'll come to on the next one. We've done a bit out of order. Moves very, very fast, a great variety of tracks. We do review quite a few Formula 1 games in this first 50 because I like racing and Formula 1. Check out that rear view up the top there. That is pretty cool. Ayrton Senna designed a few of the tracks on this one, I am told. Good game to have. Add this to your collection if you own the real system or um, emulation. Highly, highly recommended. Super Monaco Grand Prix, a little bit like um, the sequel where and Senna we just saw, although it's a little bit slower. Uh, the cars always, always seem to be the same colour, this green. And there's less tracks to choose from. Out of the two, I'd go for Ayrton Senna's, Senna's Monaco Grand Prix. But um, this one isn't bad either. I think each one would have been okay. And again, it's got the rear view mirror you can see um, up above there. So a bit of a feat of a programming ability. As I say, we'll come to a few Formula 1 games here, so you might form your own opinion what's your favourite. Sensible Soccer, good to see this after Dino Dini's um, uh, Soccer, which is based on Kickoff 2. There's a big fight back in the day, what was better, Sensible Soccer or a Kickoff 2, a la Dino Dini's. Uh, they both they both got their own um, sort of like um, things. My slight preference is the Kickoff series, but this plays absolutely awesome once you get the use of it. So I like I like both of them, and this plays um, identical to the Amiga version, uh, which it came out on originally. You'll have great fun with Sensible soccer especially with multiple players must Batman direct from the arcades um, this is uh, probably as accurate from the arcades you can actually get it great sounds here must Pac-Man uh, eats all the pills in the maze and then we go so you know I prefer Pac-Mania in 3d but in terms of retro action this one is pretty cool as well like Miss Pac-Man, she's a bit like uh, Pac-Man but with a bow in her hair and that's pretty much it really. Game also came out on the Atari 2600 uh, but this one is the best version I've ever seen. You might have your own version, if so comment below. The Chaos Engine, another big clash on the Commodore Amiga, it's a run and gun set in the future. There's a machine called the Chaos Engine which is uh, dabbled with everyone's DNA. And you and a computer opponent, who goes to help you, unless you've got a human player here, must go through different levels blow everything up to save the day. Uh, I really like this game, it's from the Bitmap Brothers, who also did uh, Speedball 2, and their game often um, said uh, quality, uh, it moves quite fast, and as I say, the Amiga version had uh, some odd load times, not so much with the Mega Drive. Uh, Road Blasters from the arcades there, it's all like okay, but I can't take it overly, overly seriously, it's a bit comical. The stages are a little bit too short for me, but you must destroy everything on the road. Uh, occasionally, um, a support helicopter or a ship will give you special powers, and you must get these green orbs that are on the road, uh, or else you'd run out of fuel. It's not bad for a few minutes, but it isn't a super game. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's funny, and um, yeah, there we go. That's pretty much it, really. Paperboy, great from the arcades again, uh, the best version I've ever played, great music as well, everyone's heard of Paperboy, uh, you must go from Monday to Friday avoiding all obstacles and street dancers like that, and avoiding traffic that comes in your way, you must deliver papers to uh, non uh, well, subscribers and smash the winners of non-subscribers so they end up subscribing to your round. 
Uh, don't think uh, I ever got to the end, but if you get to the end of a particular day, you get to do uh, a stunt course, and uh, that's your reward. Dane's Pond Underwater Agent, its spiritual home, is on the Cold Raw Amiga. Sorry to keep going on about the Amiga, but that's the game I grew up with. And we've got a bit of an overlap with these first 50, at least. Uh, Jane's Pond must collect keys and rescue the sea folk, stop pollution over different uh, pun-named levels based on the James Bond movies. James Pond. I prefer the sequel, James Pond Robocop, but this is pretty good as well, and it sold quite a large number of units. Formula One World Championship Edition, uh, called Room on the Commodore Amiga, moves quite fast. My preference, though, is for um, Ayrton Senna's Super Monaco Grand Prix, but this moves at a hell of a lick. Good stuff, wouldn't have been disappointed with this. Uh, good layout, it looks quite original in its way. There is an F1 non-World Championship Edition, which I haven't played. I'm guessing it plays, well, very, very similar indeed. Learn the track, don't decelerate a lot. Polygon graphics going past. Um, there's a lot to like with this game. James Bond 2, code, known, code name Robocop, which I was talking about. This time he's got um, a Robocop body, and we must rescue lots of penguins uh, that have been kidnapped and toys from this evil creature that's, um, well, kidnapped Santa, some evil doctor. It's quite cute. There's a lot of levels. Its cuteness might make a few people become ill. Uh, but, yeah, it's a good feat of um, programming. You do get a lot of value for your money, and you're not going to complete this in just an afternoon. There is a James Bond 3, I think, that came out on the Amiga. I'm not sure if it came out on the Mega Drive. Micro Machines, an absolute classic game, which was to um, spawn um, a load of succession successful sequels. Uh, this one, yeah, it's a bit, a bit tricky, but um, it's the most basic of the first three, which you would uh, imagine. Um, lots of different modes there you can play. Always better with a number of players, but top-down racing, you can control boats, cars, uh, even tanks in the most latest of games. Micro Machines, if you like the toys, you'd have great fun uh, with this game as we go around a breakfast table. Clax is a puzzle game, a little bit like Tetris, but this time the shapes come down the screen. You must catch them in a bat, then dump them on that grid below. If you get three colours in a row, that's called a clax, and that absolutely vanishes. If the grid fills up and you run out of spaces, you have lost. Doesn't sound too much to it, does it, really? The bat can hold five. Um, different colours, but you know, it is quite good fun if you're into those sort of games. If you're into more action or racing games, you could probably give this one a miss. Not as good as Tetris, but quite good in all the same. Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament. You can see the graphics are slightly better than the first game. I was still quite hopeless and I drove off the table quite a lot. Um, you do get a lot of different tracks here if you're good enough to qualify for them, and it's cute graphics, it's good sound. Again, a great game in a two-player. If it's just you there, something is a little bit lost, because um, in two players or even three players, you're pretty much the same standard. Here, the computer AI smashed my uh, bottom in and uh, beat me every time. Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. Now, the first game, Double Dragon, was great. Uh, Double Dragon 2 The Revenge is, well, awful in my opinion. Terrible colour palette, way too dark, and uh, really unforgiving if it's in one player's. Now, in Double Dragon, the original game, you could sort of do it in one player. Here, um, in one player, it's a waste of time. So if you're a kid that just bought it with no one around the place, like Mr. Lonely, you're very rarely going to get off a stage one. The Revenge, well, it's a revenge on me. Don't buy Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. Shadow of the Beast, uh, from the Commodore Amiga, go left or um, you won't solve it. Um, the music is lacking a bit from the Amiga version, but all the same, the elements are there. You feel like you're going on a massive adventure, and as a kid, it would have just um, uh, taken me um, uh, along for the ride. A good game, uh, there's, there's a sequel to it as well. Shadow of the Beast 3 didn't come out on the Mega Drive, unfortunately. If you completed this game, then let me know. Do check out the reviews of any of these games if you like the look of them and want to see a bit more. Nigel Mansell's World Championship, now it's a chase view this time, uh, reflected on Nigel Mansell's groundbreaking in 1992 season. All the other versions of this game on other systems are cockpit view. This one is chase view for some reason, which, you know, it gives you a bit of a variety. The track is very narrow, but it plays pretty good. Again, my, fa my I do favour Air and Senna's Super Monaco Grand Prix 2. Uh, this one isn't so bad, and it's nostalgia for me because, you know, Nigel Mansell, 1992. Hooray! Shadow of the Beast 2, again incredibly difficult, the depth isn't there from the Amiga version, um, it's not as good as that version, the character isn't quite as good, uh, the music isn't quite as deep either, but it gives you the basis of it, it's like Shadow of the Beast 2 um, light. 
Um, if I didn't know the Amiga version existed, I probably would have liked this one. I uh, haven't completed either of them, but solving puzzles. And it's, you know, they're both similar in the, the way you're solving puzzles as we try and blow this fella up who's pushing spikes at me. There we go, he's dead. Hooray! Strider, the last game we look at in these top 50, again from the arcades. Best version of Strider I've ever played. And the animation isn't brilliant in terms of frame rate, but it doesn't need to be to be reflective of the... Um, the arcade version and you know these first 50 games I've really really enjoyed playing as I say didn't know too much about the Mega Drive Genesis back in the day but I'm really enjoying catching up now do like your recommendations of other ones to play and I'm gradually going through those I've got a huge 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 list so that's Strider so I like, hope you liked having a look at that initial 50 uh, as soon as we've done another 50 I'll uh, do another selection of roundup videos there if you've got any comments about these games similar games or anything retro then please please um, comment below. Thank you for watching those videos. It is really appreciated showing them a bit of love. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.